In my unhumble and very biased opinion, I believe that medicine is a very good life choice. I would argue that it has one of the best fulfillment to income ratios of all careers, and there's a bajillion things you can do with a medical degree. So good on you for considering it, but it's pretty bloody hard to get in. The good news is though, when you're in, it's usually pretty easy to stay in. Anyway, because it's so tricky to get in, you essentially have to become an expert in the process of entry. And so that's why I've made this video and hopefully it'll help you. So if you're a keen bean, smarty pants machine, then let's roll the intro. <laughs> So I'm Medico Sill. I'm on the other end of this entire process that you are thinking about embarking on. I'm actually in my final months of my entire medical degree. So in a couple of months, I'll actually be working as a doctor. And as you approach the end of your degree, you become reflective. You think about what do I wish I had have known earlier? And one of the things I wish I knew was a bit more about the process of getting into medicine. And maybe if I knew these things, I wouldn't have had to apply so many bloody times. But anyway, this isn't about me. This is about you. So you can start your undergraduate medicine degree the year after you finish year 12, like most degrees. And it basically needs three things. A freaking awesome ATAR, a bloody good UCAT, and a bloody good interview performance. Now, different universities might have different extra things you need to do, like a portfolio or an application. So for example, at UNSW Sydney, where I study, uh, we had to do an application. And you can see my video of my first failed application in the card here. So that can give you an idea of what not to write on yours. So let's explore each one of these things in detail. So first is the ATAR. So the ATAR is basically the summary of your high school performance. And depending on which state you're in, you might have done the HSC, or it could be an average of all the coursework you've done over the two years. Now getting a good ATAR, in my opinion, is probably one of the most preparable things you can do. Uh, it's not hard to understand what you need to do to get a good ATAR. It's hard to get a good ATAR, and the higher the ATAR, the more likely you'll get an interview. But it's not hard to understand the process of getting a good ATAR, which is essentially perform well in your courses. So don't stress if, like me, you're not a 99er. Uh, plenty of universities will accept uh, people with ATARs between 95 and 99, and even down to 85 if you're eligible for special entry pathways. I guess my advice to you if you're starting your high school um, journey is to get a good ATAR, you really need to study how to study. A lot of people just, you know, go into high school and do what they've always been doing, rereading, highlighting, whatever. The most commonly used revision techniques are not the best revision techniques, okay? So you need to study how, you need to understand how your mind works and look at the techniques that work best for you. I highly recommend you check out Ali Abdal's uh, YouTube channel where he talks a lot about different revision and studying tips, all evidence-based. And I'm optimistic that that will change the way you study and improve your grades significantly. So now let's talk about the UCAT. This is the Undergraduate Clinical Aptitude Test. I don't really think it tests clinical aptitude, but you have to do it anyway. This is a pretty big test. It's pretty tricky. There's three sections, each very different, and it, that's a whole video in itself. But essentially it's organized by ACER and you apply through your state body. So in New South Wales, it's UAC. There's also VTAC, QTAC, TICTAC. No, no TICTAC. <laughs> but just go to the UCAT website and look at how to apply for your state. Now I did the UCAT three times. First time I got 43rd percentile, you know, basically 43 out of 100. Second time I got a crap 60, and then the third time I got in the high 90s, and so it is something you can improve on, but it also means that it's something you can study for. So definitely pick up some practice tests, work with your friends, and work really hard to do well in it. It is something you can prepare for, but don't be disheartened if you don't do well, because you can just try again the next year. How to study and prepare for the UCAT is an entirely different video in itself, and I will make a video about that soon. But for now, just appreciate that there's a big test you have to do. Now, if you get a good ATAR and you perform well in the UCAT, you will be eligible in sitting an interview. Now, medical schools will invite 150% of their student spots to interviews. So what I mean by that is, if you are getting an interview, you have a two in three chance of getting a position, basically. So one in three people will be cut from the interview, roughly, right? Now, different medical schools have different styles of interview. The interview I did at UNSW in Sydney was a much more of a conversational, getting to know you, see how you handle weird questions, like uh, what animal would you be if you could be any animal? Or why would you not want to be a dentist? Anyway, the point of this is to say that you have to look at the specific medical schools you're interested in applying to and look at what their interview style is like. Make sure you look at YouTube and Reddit and lots of different forums to see 
um, what people have said about the style of interview, and that can give you some insight on how you should prepare it. But you should prepare it. You need to practice talking a lot to, go, to be comfortable in interviews. So let's talk about the timeline. In year 11, uh, in December, you should apply for the UCAT, uh, but you have until June before the registrations close. You'll start your year 12 in January probably, and then you'll sit the UCAT in July. This is a pretty tense time. So the grades come out in September, and in September you also have to apply for your medical school, uh, and seeing the grade you get in the UCAT can kind of sit, it can inform which medical schools you might be competitive to enter. In November you'll finish your uh, year 12 exams and then in December you'll have the interview offers and if it's all good then you'll start in the next February but if you miss out if you don't get it do not stress all right guys there's a lot of other entry pathways into medicine if you don't get into undergrad first of all if you don't get in straight away you can just start another undergrad degree and reapply the next year and just reset the UCAT that year alternatively you can do UNSW Medical Science and do the lateral entry pathway, which I talk about in um, my video here. And finally, you can always just do postgraduate medicine, all right? So there's other, there's, there's still hope if you don't get in straight away. And I didn't get in for the first three attempts. So if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching till now, guys. Um, I'm a small channel, but I make videos that are educational. I do reflective case discussions of de-identified patient stories. And I make all sorts of other hopefully helpful content that gets your gears going. So. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and you can grow with me. And don't forget, you can always unsubscribe later. All right guys, have an absolutely lovely day. Bye for now.